Hi, everybody. Dave Winder here on Murray State's Facebook page as we are bringing you uh, one of the great games from the Racers, OVCDN games uh, from 2013 to 2018. And one of those that we want to dive into here with Neil Bradley and Kenny Roth, the voices of Murray State Radio, and you also hear them on our ESPN Plus broadcast, is John Morant's first triple-double which came on December 28, 2017, against Eastern Illinois. And, guys, this is pretty amazing when you think about it. Um, this was only John ja Morant's 12th game he had played for the Racers. But we all kind of figured at some point he was, he was going to get a triple-double and ended up getting a bunch of them. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I think I may have remarked on the post game that that was maybe his first triple-double but by the time he was a senior, he'd have more. And it turned out I was right. He did have one against Marquette. I just didn't know he would get another one uh, with the Memphis Grizzlies. So it wasn't his senior year, but it was his, uh, would have been his, his junior year instead. Uh, it gave us a hint of things to come. Uh, but I'll be brutally honest, even in that early, early on, in that particular game, I mean, that's December of 17, I had no – no idea we were about to see the explosion we were getting ready to see the next season. He had a terrific freshman season, don't get me wrong, but the sophomore season was really off the charts as we all know by now. Kenny? Well, and this was a, a skinny kid from rural South Carolina, and when he walked in the gym, you, you certainly didn't see a number two draft pick uh, on his back when we first laid eyes on him. He was confident, uh, but very humble. And, and don't forget, too, that the Racers had a returning all-OBC point guard senior in Jonathan Stark that, was, that had agreed to move off the basketball so this freshman could come in and handle the point guard duties. And, and so uh, there was a lot of question around Matt McMahon's decision on, on how to handle Jonathan Stark, but I think Jonathan Stark handled it so well as he was the one that came to Coach McMahon and said, hey, we've got to play the freshman. So let's figure out how I can play off the basketball and he can be the point. This, this was the start of a championship season uh, for the OVC uh, in 2017, here, December 28, 2017. Uh, this was the 70th season of OVC basketball, and uh, it was just an incredible night. Uh, and we're going to join you again at halftime, uh, and we'll dissect the first half. So enjoy the game. It's Murray State at home against Eastern Illinois. This is December 28, 2017. John ja Morant's first triple-double at Murray State. Stark averaging 16.3 points, 3.7 rebounds per game. The forwards, Jalen Dupree, a 6'9 sophomore from Cordova, Tennessee. Dupree averages 7.8 points, 4.5 rebounds per game. And the other forward is Terrell Miller. He's a 6'8 senior out of Jacksonville, Florida, averaging 17.1 points. 7.8 rebounds per contest. Matt McMahon, the head coach in his third season, 41 wins and 34 losses. Your officials for tonight, Craig Murley, John Dillon, and Darnell Spann. Razors in their home white shirts and shorts. And for Eastern Illinois, it is their blue shirts and shorts, EIU across the front. Names on the back, white numerals, and alternating gray and white striped trims along the sleeves and the sides of the shorts. We are set to go. Pretty decent crowd on hand, but plenty of seats available if you want to come on out. The students aren't on campus, so it is imperative for the racers to get home crowd support. They lead the OBC in home attendance, and tonight will certainly go along with it, helping do that. Opening tip, though, controlled by Eastern Illinois, and we are underway at the top of the key. It is Jackson. Jackson gets it off on the right side, left side rather. Goes down on the low block to Crossland, tries to back down his defenders, dumps it into Stark. Looked like he walked, and he did. The official caught it. Sure did. Eastern Illinois immediately trying to post up freshman John Morant, and Terrell Miller comes over to give some help. Full court pressure applied by Eastern Illinois. No one has been effective at pressing the racers this year. Thanks to Morant, he kicks it off to Stark for the three. It rattles no good. Stuffed in by Buchanan, but they said his hands was in the cylinder, and I have to agree. Hey, that's a good call there by Craig Murley as, as Shaq Buchanan got just a little antsy there as he was up in there looking at it, though, and hit, I think that ball might have been heading in the basket anyway. I, I think it could have been, so nevertheless, it's waved off on what looked like an excellent call. EIU with it, right side Goodwin. 
Goes to the top of the key to Starks. Goes on the wing to Jackson. Down to the mid block. Dama looks to back down Dupree. Little hook shot is up. It rattles no good. And Miller snags the rebound. Allen to the right side goes to Morant. He dishes it in to Dupree. Watch the defender float by and he put it up and in. That's what we talked about, Neil, is gang rebounding on one end, then getting the ball in Morant's hands and let him attack in transition. Goodwin brings it across the center stripe with the Racers striking first. We played a minute. Goodwin at the left elbow finds Starks at the top. He'll come right side to Crossland. Holds the ball at his waist. Looks inside. Sees nothing. Finds Dama. Goes to the left side to Jackson. Looks for the lob. It doesn't develop. Down in the low block. This is Dama. Gets past Dupree. Missed it. Tipped in the air. Rebounded. Tapped out of bounds. Off of Eastern Illinois. Crossland. It goes to the Racers. Well, already you can see Terrell Miller fighting in there on the defensive back board and that's the key to this game Neil is game rebounding on the defensive backboard and keeping Eastern Illinois off the glass as they've got 20 more offensive rebounds than their opponents. Stark brings it up against the press which was uh, a little bit soft as is planned by Eastern Illinois. They just want to make the racers take some extra time. Morant goes inside puts it up no good tip by Dupree. Morant got his own rebound puts it up it rattles out no good. This rebound, Dupree tiptoes the sideline, throws it in the backcourt. It's out of bounds. Miller gave chase, but it's going to go back to Eastern Illinois. Well, a lot of activity there on the offensive glass by, by the racers. John Moran had a couple of looks there. Sometimes he gets to the rim, Neil, and tries to make the shot a little bit tougher maybe than it has to be. Inbounds pass comes to Dama, hands it off to Crossland. He dribbles twice, throws right side to Starks. Through two defenders, had it slapped out of his hands, out of bounds by the Racers. It'll go to EIU on an underneath out of bounds. They'll go left to the basket. The trigger man will be Jackson. Fixes his string on his shorts for a moment. The official toots the whistle, gets set to hand him the ball. Watch the alley-oop here to Dama. They lobbed it to Starks. Comes right side to Dama. Mid-block. Skip pass out to Crossland. Throws to Starks, back to the right side, Goodwin, free throw line, bounces left, three in the air, no good by Crossland, but the rebound, high kick, pulled down by Stark, inside, off the glass and in to Crossland. There's an offensive rebound right away there that cost the racers the bucket. Game deadlocked at two, 17-39 and ticking as Morant brings it across the center stripe. He's between the circles, gets some instructions from Matt McMahon, works the sideline, gets a handoff to Stark, who finds Miller between the circles. Off to Morant, gets a screen from Dupree, looks to lob it to Dupree, finds him, he puts it up and rattles it in. Good catch there by the big fella Dupree on a bullet pass from Morant. That makes it 4-2 Rangers. Dupree hands them all for Murray State. Jackson brings it up, guarded by Morant. Jackson replacing Terrell Lewis out with an ankle injury for a fourth straight game. Although he made the trip, he's not dressed out. Jump pass goes into the corner to Crossland. He begins to dribble, faces up on Buchanan, passes down low to Dama, fade away from 14 feet by Stark, left side of the rim won't go, Dupree rebounds and gets it away to Morant. He brings it across the center stripe, left side of the lane, flips it behind his back to Miller, who missed a three badly. It hit the far side of the backboard over to the rim, but it's poked away from behind by Buchanan. He finds Stark right side, bounce inside to Dupree, but he let it too low or something. I'm not sure what happened, but it was fumbled out of bounds. It was a bounce pass to the big fella, Dupree, with a little low down around his knees. He just couldn't reach down and grab it. Good idea, but the... Result was not good. 4-2. Murray stayed on top. 16-36 remaining a slow offensive start for each team. As the Racers 2 for 6 from the field. EIU just 1 of 5. Goodwin between the circles. Gets a screen from Dama and buries the 3. Sweet left-handed jumper there by Goodwin. And this is one of the more tougher, tougher tasks that Jonathan Stark's going to have defensively in covering him. Goodwin's been hot. Morant dishes it across to Dupree. Went up for the dunk. Missed the shot. Rebound pulled down by Morant in heavy traffic. He dishes to Buchanan for a wide open three. He missed everything but the far side of the backboard. And it's EIU getting the rebound. Up 5-4. Up against our first media timeout. Panthers looking to add to the lead. The Razors missing a pair of threes as bad as you could possibly miss. They haven't touched the rim with either one of them or gone through the net. Pass right side to Crossland. We get a whistle away from the ball. I believe this will be against Dupree. It's a push. 
And that'll get us to our media timeout. 5-4 Eastern Illinois on top at our first break. 15.48 to go. Horse powered by CFSB. This is the Racer Sports Network. Are there early thoughts, Kenny? Well, a lot of activity, Neil, by the Racers. Uh, getting three offensive rebounds of the five shots they've missed, but really not a lot to show for them. It's two for eight from the field to start the game. Trigger man will be good when right side of the basket. They'll get it out top to Starks. Panthers up one. Fumbled a little bit by Starks, but he's able to pick it up. Throws left, back right, top of the key. New player into the game. That is Max Smith seeing his first action since November 24th. Shot blocked out of bounds by the racers. It'll go to Eastern Illinois underneath with Three on the shot clock. Dama had the ball underneath there, and John Morant came out of nowhere and blocked that out of bounds. The racers need to watch the lob right now. Goodwin comes out to start, steps to the free throw line for the jumper. It rattles in and out, and Morant grabs the rebound, about to be blindsided, but someone gave him a shout-out, and he picked it up. Right side, he fires to Shaq Buchanan. Bounce down to the baseline. It goes to Sanchez. Muscles past his man. Left-hand shot, no good. Pumped in off the glass by Miller. Weak side rebounding by Terrell Miller there. And I'm convinced Terrell Miller can get three or four or five putbacks a game if he'll go hard to that glass. That puts the Rangers up 6-5 every shot they've made from point blank range. Goodwin, left side start, cradles it, goes inside. May have gotten away with a walk. The official said no. And on the rebound, Miller tips it to Stark. He'll bring it up, lobs it in front to Sanchez for the layup. Good. Well, who's the new fast break? Is as that is two games in a row that Breon Sanctions get out running the floor, Neil, and he's the recipient of a great pass from Stark. It doesn't take, and he's a smart kid. Breon's really smart, but it doesn't take a genius to know if I got Morant and Stark and I run down the floor ahead of everybody, I might get a few baskets, and he certainly has well, seen it, that the last two games. He has, and it puts such pressure on the defense when they know that the big guys are going to run every time. And when, you know, when you reward them every once in a while, it's kind of like a puppy dog. You yeah. know, <laughs> they'll keep doing it if you give them a reward every once in a while and start fed him beautifully that time. And Sanks just made a clean catch, laid it up for the basket. Rion has made five of seven from the field in his last three games. And now one of two to start here. And it makes it 8-5. Race was on time. Jay Spoonauer took a timeout. He did not like seeing those uh, point-blank buckets by the racer. 14-41 and ticking. Pass goes to the left side. Away to Max Smith. Three on the way by Goodwin. No good. Sanchez grabs the rebound. He'd gone back-to-back -back games, 11 minutes with no rebounds, but picks one up there. Top of the key, Morant swings it in to Miller off the glass and in with a left hand. What a pass by the freshman Morant. He threw a bounce pass with his left hand all the way to the block. Miller had him sealed beautifully. That makes it 10-5. Racers on top. And a reach-in foul called on Shaq Buchanan as his man tried to get by. Looked like he might have put both hands on him. And that's a no. First foul on Shaq Buchanan. Second against the Racers, not shooting. And it will be Mac Smith to trigger it. Smith is a 6-2 freshman. Comes to Jackson, top of the key. Shovels it right side to Starks. Left elbow, had it knocked away by Moran, but picked back up out to Jackson. Right corner three in the air by Max Smith. No good, and Sanchez with another rebound. Comes off to John Moran, swings it left side to Miller. Stop and pop three, no good. Rebound by Eastern Illinois, and a reaching foul called on Sanchez. He picks up his first. Boy, you love Breon Sanchez going hard to the glass there, but he got to know when to throttle it back just a little bit not to get that foul. One for five last time out for Terrell Miller. To me, that is what was remarkable about beating Detroit. They, he didn't have his best game. They still won. Now he starts this one one of two. So a little mini slump for Miller from outside. Jackson. Goes right side to Crossland, peeks into the corner for Smith. He's not there. Goes to Goodwin out top to Jackson. Down low for the layup. It's Smith hitting it. Nice cut there by, by Smith being able to get that pick. Down 10-7 the score. Morant brings it up. Smith applying the, the pressure on him. Pretty good matchup. Good thick body there by Smith as Morant goes right side. Gets a screen from Sanchez, rejects it. Pops it inside to Miller for another layup. Well, I saw the racers practicing that last night, Neil. That's this new special wrinkle the racers have put in with a little isolation with Morant to Miller. Racers have hit six shots from two feet in. 12-7 Murray State. It's a steal by Stark, and here will be another one as Stark goes in, and he stuffs it. 
You don't see many stuffs from Stark, but you got that off the steal. Stark is seventh in the league in steals, one and a half a game. He got one there, 14-7. Pass right side, Crossland, a three is rattling off. No good. There's Morant with another rebound. Pass left side to Hawkins. Byron Hawkins backs it out on the wing, bounces high on the left elbow to Miller. Goes through Moran out top, right side Stark. He's beyond the elbow. He'll step back for a three. No good. The racers missing threes about as bad as you could miss. They haven't even been close with one yet. And Eastern Illinois, the rebound. It's 14 to 7. Racers 0 for 4 from three range. Whip pass inside Dama. Tipped away by Miller. Picked up by Goodwin. He'll shoot a three on the wing. He missed it. Miller tried to square it up, and he's able to seal for the rebound. Stark finds Morant. Three range, whips it inside for Sanchez, and he's bumped from behind by Dama. That's his first foul. That'll get us to our next media timeout. 14-7, Murray stayed on top with 11.58 remaining in the first half. Force powered by CFSB, back in a minute on the Racer Sports Network. Radio when they shoot a three. One of nine, the teams have combined from three range. Start left wing three, bang! The reverse. I guess psychology there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> keep it up. Finally, the racers knock one down to make it a 17 to seven lead. Stark's first three of the night, he has five. Past right side, Goodwin gets the defender in the air, jumps up and hits the 15 footer. Smooth lefty boy, he could really stroke the basketball, Goodwin. Goodwin has five, 17 to nine, crossover dribble. Stark gets to the left elbow, cut off by Crossland, gets around and kicks into the far corner, a three by Hawkins, no good, but we're gonna get a blocking foul called on Eastern Illinois non-shooting foul and that'll be against Cook spells his name K-O-C-H but Cook number 11 Hope took the red shirt off him when uh, they had the injury to uh, Lewis ah. pass right side catch and shoot three Stark hit another one two straight now by Stark and it that one came out easy Neil when it comes quickly out of his hands when they start falling 20 to 9. I came over to set up equipment this morning, 10 after 9. Stark, only one in the gym shooting. Left hand, no good. Shot by Crossland. Rebound pulled up by the racers. Morant, jump pass into the corner to Hawkins. Bounce to Stark, look for another three. It didn't develop that time. They closed down on him. He kicks it out to Hawkins at three range. Gets by his defender, goes up with the left hand, missed it. Got his own rebound, put it up and in. That's a good second, second effort there by Byron Hawkins as he went in. Diallo blocked it, and he went and got his own board and put it right back up. 22 to nine, Murray State, and another timeout taken by Jay Spoonauer. He does not want to see this one get away from him early. Sirloin Stockade is a free game favorite for all your racer teams, offering an all-you-can-eat hot and cold buffet, including hot entrees, vegetables, and salads. The full-service bakery offers fresh rolls, spice cakes, and soft-serve ice cream with a variety of toppings. Sirloin Stockade, great food at a great value, Stop by before the game or after the game at Sirloin Stockade on South 12th Street in Murray. Just look for the big cow. The racers are rolling in every category they wanted to excel in. A 15-7 rebounding edge already, Kenny. Well, and this Eastern Illinois team is a plus 67 points on the year on points in the paint, Neil. They want to get that ball in the paint and try to bang you up and big boy you. The racers right now leading points in the paint, 16 to four, clearly dominating the paint. Let's see if any more adjustments have been made by Jay Spoonauer. Pass goes to the left side, down to Smith. He comes right side to Jackson. Bounce down to the baseline. This is Starks, drives by Smith, the defender, and banked it in. Juan Starks, first points. Three starters have now scored for EIU. Jackson and Dama have yet to score. Stark between the circles. Passes left side to Morant. 22-11 Murray State. Morant finds Sanchez at the top. Goes right side to Stark. To the right elbow. Finds Hawkins wide open three. No good. Too hard. Rebound in the air. Nearly lost for the moment by Dama, but he's able to gather it in and find Jackson. 22-11. Murray State has doubled EIU. We hit the 10-minute mark of the first half as Buchanan and Dupree get set to come back in. To the near side, it comes to Jackson. Jackson works, oh, beauty of a crossover dribble, but was tipped out by Morant, who said, hey, I tipped it off Jackson, but the official didn't see it that way. No, he didn't. John Morant trying to lobby there. He and Jackson, 
laughing at each other. Jackson knows who he was trying to get one. And what what a great what a great attitude the freshman Moran has. You can see that he just plays the game with so much passion and fun. Pass comes inbounds to Jackson. Left elbow jump pass goes into the corner. Back to Smith. They'll work the sideline to Jackson. Right side it comes to Starks. Look for the up and under, does it there? Crossman loses his defender, the in and out 15 footer, but a great hustle by Stark. Then Hawkins had it and lost it out of bounds. And Matt McMahon said, should there be a shot clock violation? But yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. Hit the rim. They had three racers around that basketball, yeah. Neil, and, and one player from Eastern Illinois. But Racers couldn't come up with it. Yeah, I thought it hit the rim, too. Anyway, far side goes to Jackson. 9.27 in ticking, 22-11. Jackson lifts his dribble, throws left side to Crossland, down low to Dama, fakes a shovel pass back to Crossland, goes in the lane for three or four seconds, dishes it out to Starks, now to Jackson. 10 on the shot clock. Jackson backs it out, looks for a screen from Dama. Good hedge by Smith, whips it right through the hands of Dama out of bounds. Well, the racer's doing a nice job there. That possession is, is one of the things Eastern Illinois does so well. They catch the ball, and they give you a ball fake, trying to be able to drive the ball, and the racers kept their feet through that entire possession and then forced the turnover. 22 to 11, racers up with 9.04 remaining. Four turnovers for the Panthers. The racers guilty of two as Morant brings it across. Man-to-man -man pressure applied by the Panthers. Passes left to Hawkins. He dribbles out high, looks left to Buchanan, takes it to the left elbow, jump pass goes to Hawkins, bounces to Dupree, picked up by Dupree, nearly stolen. He finds Buchanan out top, doesn't want the three, six on the shot clock. Hawkins gets a screen from Dupree, looks for a step back shot, and as he went to shoot, he's going to get two shots. Crossland reached in and fouled him, and that was a bailout. He wasn't in a good spot to take any kind of a shot. There. He wasn't, and a heady play by Hawkins, though, as he knew he was wasn't going to get a good shot off so he gave a ball fake and got got the reach in on Eastern Illinois and he's going to go to the free throw line for two two shots now. Crossland's first foul some issues lately for Byron Hawkins and they continue as it goes halfway down kicks out over his last four games two of six at the charity stripe now make it two of seven as the free throw woes continue for Byron Hawkins second is in the air and it's no good but we have a whistle and a foul call. This may be on Dupree on the rebound. And that is exactly it. Jalen Dupree picks up his second foul. And in for him will be Miller. That'll mean extra minutes for Smith and Sanchez for the rest of the half with 8.36 remaining. Jalen Dupree aggressive on that offensive glass. Inbounds pass comes to Jackson. A little full court pressure applied by Hawkins and Moran as Jackson and Goodwin bring it up. Goodwin has it into front court at the big M at center court. Passes left side to start. Right elbow jumps, puts the shot up, missed it. And a foul. Some of the fans thought he may have taken a step, but it looked like a good jump step from here. And the foul goes against Anthony Smith. It'll be his first. Into the line, it will be Jawan Starks. Starks a 63% free throw shooter shooting two here hits the first Starks is a highly recruited junior college All-American and Eastern Illinois and Jay Spoonhour were able to land him and he's undersized but in this league as a four man he can be very successful free throw no good Miller tips it to Smith who grabs the rebound passes to Moran 22 to 12 racers haven't scored though the last 225 down on the low block it's Miller Miller, they doubled down on him. That means somebody's open. He can't find who it is, though. Gets it to Buchanan. Step back three in the corner. Miller missed badly again. He's 0 for 3. 1 for his last 8 from three-point range. Bounce. No look. Inside. Off the glass and in for Dama. And Matt McMahon can't stand that. Now he will take a timeout. That'll turn into a media timeout with 7.55 remaining. 22 to 14 to score. We'll be back in a minute. Horse powered by CFSB on the Racer Sports Network. Coach McMahon called a timeout to, to get that stopped and draw attention to it. The Racers don't want to forget how they built this lead, and that's been on tough defense and controlling the backboard. Moran on the bench. Hawkins will run the point. Throws left side to Buchanan. One hands it to Smith. Looks for Hawkins deep on the wing right side. 
Coming off the screen is Stark. He catches it, being guarded by Crossland. That is a favorable matchup for EIU. Stark looks for a screen, drives right side for a step back, five in the shot clock, goes inside with a left hand off the glass, no good, didn't hit rim, and Stark with the rebound for Eastern Illinois. Comes away to Jackson. Motions with his left hand, throws to Goodwin. He'll dribble one time. Come to Jackson between the circles. Throws to the right side. Goodwin squares up for a three, and he hit it. Well, you got to have a high closeout. Get your hands high when you go out on Goodwin. He's got a quick release with that left hand. Razor's 13-point lead down to five. Goodwin red hot over his last two games, 8 of 16 from three range. He's made two tonight. And it's a five-point game as Hawkins has it right side, gets a screen from Miller. One hands the pass to Smith. Look for that backdoor cut to Buchanan. Find Stark for the three. Missed it, but drew the foul on Crossland. It'll be his second, and it'll send Jonathan Stark to the line for three. Well, Crossland came out of the hedge that high screen and just came into the shooter, Stark. So Stark's going to go to the line for three. Stark coming back and starting to shoot it well at the free throw line again, Neil. And if he can get that going where he sees that ball going through the basket from the free throw line, it certainly helps the rest of his game. He has made 11 straight free throws as he steps to the stripe and hits, stripe and hits the first here four games ago. He missed his first and hasn't missed one since. Pushes the lead to six. The second of three for Stark is good. Already double digits for Jonathan Stark. Ten points. We'll see Smith out of the game. Embryon Sanchez back in. Also, John Morant checks back in. Byron Hawkins will take a seat. Racers hadn't had a field goal now in four minutes and two seconds. So they've got to be able to come back down offensively, get the ball into Terrell Miller's hands and let him operate on the low block. All three free throws made by Stark to push the lead back to 25-17. Pass left wing goes to Goodwin. He's between the circles. He comes right side to Jackson inside the free throw line. Up and under, missed it. Rebound off the leg of Dama out of bounds. And they'll go to the Racers. Racers got away with one there as, as Morant was beat as, as Jackson got all the way to the rim and just couldn't get it to fall. Miller will get it in to Morant. Morant will bring it across. Morant has six assists already. Morant bounced down to the low block. It goes to Miller. Tries to back down his defender. They double team in, try to dig it out. We'll get a pushing foul called on EIU. Well, it's tough to, it's tough to cover Miller on that low block unless you bring the double team. And Eastern Illinois decided not to bring the double team. And, and, and just stay there with Dama, and Trail Miller can have his way on the block. Dama's second foul, so Crossland and Dama each with two. Left elbow at start, goes up and had his shot blocked out of bounds by Goodwin. It'll go back to the Racers on the underneath, out of bounds. And we'll see. Bubakar Diallo check into the game. Despite his limited minutes, he's seventh in the league in block shots. Pass comes to Miller, to Sanchez, left side, Stark, a wide open look from three. Front of the rim won't go, and Diallo grabs the rebound. He'll go to the left side, away to Jackson. EIU has it, Jackson spins to the hoop. Had it blocked by Stark, but they're going to call him for a foul. You can see the explosiveness that D'Angelo Jackson has for East Bend, Illinois. As he, he blew by Morant there, got to the rim, and forced Stark to come over and try to block the shot, and, and he drew the foul. D'Angelo Jackson hasn't scored, averages 9.4 per game. Not a great free throw shooter at 59%, but he buries the first of two here. He gets to the line a lot because of that. He's third in the OVC in free throw attempts. Second free throw is also good. 25-19, Racers up six. They led by as many as 13. EIU had a brief lead of 5-4 at the 16-23 mark. That's it. Morant between the circles. Whips it left side to start. Looks for the lob to Miller. Finds it to him. Mid-block extended. Turns and faces Diallo. The defender looks to jab step his way past him. And he's called for traveling, moving the pivot foot before he dribbled. Well, he probably caught the ball too far out on the floor, Neil, to be able to go to work on the post with Diallo. Racers now without a field goal the last five minutes and 15 seconds of the game. Fortunately, their defense has been decent to keep this lead at six. 
Between the circles, Jackson. Or excuse me, that's Goodwin. Goodwin shovels it right side to Jackson. Whipped it into the far corner for the three. No good by Smith. The rebound pulled down by Buchanan. Off to Morant. Speeds it across the center stripe. Goes left of the lane. Went for the layup. Missed it. It was blocked out of bounds. A nice play by Jackson. What pressure Morant puts on the defense, though, as he got to the rim. It'll be an underneath out of bounds for the Razors. John ja Morant. He'll step left of the basket as we view it. The Razors shooting at the basket to the left. Slaps the ball. You heard that as he tried to get it in bounds and we'll get a moving screen or push called on Terrell Miller. That'll be his first foul. Well, Craig Murley on the call there. I'm not sure if, if, if he ever got set or not. And that's something now that you got to get your feet set, come to a complete stop on your screens. Field goal drought continues. The Razors have missed six straight field goals and none in the last 538. Starks leaves it for Smith to the left side. Good one in the corner. Back to Smith to the right side. Jackson wants a screen from Diallo. Goes right side to the baseline. Tough shot. Got it to go in. And he drew the foul. He'll have a chance at a three-point play. D'Angelo Jackson is so tough off that dribble, Neil. As you said, he's shot 61 free throws coming into the game tonight. And so he lives and dies being able to get to the basket. One of the, the key points in the scouting report for this racer team was to keep Jackson in front of you, be able to see his number all the time and force him to take a jump shot over the top. Free throw is up and good. 25-21. Razor's 13-point lead is down, or it's 22. They were late getting that up there. Down to three. Miller between the circles. Looks for the handoff to start. Racers have gone ice cold. Start, left elbow, jumps it back to Miller. and We'll get a foul called against Eastern Illinois. That's got to be a non-shooting foul. It'll be the Racers ball on the baseline. Yeah, still not in the bonus yet. It's at 16 fouls. Racers have it underneath, under out of bounds. See if they can get something easy on the baseline out of bounds. This is an area that the Racers have been working on offensively. First one on Goodwin. Lob pass comes out to Miller. Right side Sanctious. This is Stark with the free throw line floater and he hit it. Nice. You see practice. What you practice, Neil, and what you emphasize gets gets improved. The Racers there give a great score and play coming out of the at, out of the baseline out of bounds. Stark has 13, 27-22. Right side drive inside. That's Goodwin banked it. It's in and out, but Diallo right there to put it up at point-blank range for his first point to the game. Bubakar Diallo makes it 27-24. Miller, top of the key three. Another miss. Tipped up and in by Shaq Buchanan. Shaq Buchanan hitting that offensive glass. Remember, he had six big offensive rebounds in here against Auburn last week. First point to the game for Shaq Buchanan, 29-24. Goodwin flips it to Jackson. He dribbles right side, guarded by Stark. Flips it. Now to Stark, Starks inside finds Smith, right side of the lane, put it no good, but there's Diallo with another putback and an offensive rebound. Matt McMahon warned us about that. That makes it 29-26. Racers didn't see out, and it cost him again. Stark at the top with Big Diallo in his face at 6-8. Looks for the crossover dribble, leaves it for Morant, squares up for the wide open three, and he drained it. Jonathan Stark with an unselfish play there. Matt McMahon pleading his team over there. Rebound. That's the first points of the game for Moran. Every racer starter has now scored. As we go under three minutes to play in the half, 32-26 Murray State. Diallo sets a high screen into the corner. Three in the air by Goodwin. Front of the rim won't go. Stark rebounds. Three on four fast break. Leads Buchanan, who stuffs it with the left hand. Jack Buchanan with a competition dunk. He went right at Eastern Illinois and flushed it with the left hand. And the ball went out of the playing area, so the clock stopped, and that'll get us to immediate timeout. EIU will have it with Murray State leading 34 to 26. 246 remaining in the half. Horse powered by CFSB. This is the Racers Sports Net. Racers went, what, about six minutes without a field goal, Ken? Right, and the Racers doing it with defense, Neil. And that's the way this team can get from from getting to transition from defense to offense. They got to do it, get stops on the defensive end. Jackson to Goodwin takes it in the lane. 
missed the shot, but Diallo digs out the rebound. They'll go around the corner. Goodwin gets the defender in the air. 15-footer, side of the rim, won't go. Chased down by John Morant. Racers a chance for a double-digit lead if they can score on this trip. Deep three for Stark from 25, and he buried it. Matt McMahon saying push up. He wants them to put some pressure on Eastern Illinois defensively. 37 to 26, back to 11 at the 205 mark. Right side, they'll shovel it to Jackson, spins, puts it up and in, and drew the foul. He'll go to the line for a three-point play opportunity. Wow, Terrell Lewis better get ready in a hurry, Neil, as this young man, D'Angelo Jackson, he has filled the void. Has uh, played really well. The racers have had Morant on him, have had Stark on him, everyone, but but Matt McMahon has tried to stop this young man, and he's uh, he is a load getting to the basket just about any time he wants to. By the way, the foul was on Jonathan Stark, so that is his second, 37 to 28 free throw up and good by D'Angelo Jackson so he has a pair of three-point plays and the racer still up eight bringing it across the center stripe John Morant looks for Miller ice cold from three range missed it but there for the rebound is Sanchez and uh, looks like he took a poke somewhere uh, maybe in the throat or face I'm not sure accidentally but he comes out wincing as he was fouled that's when you want to I think he probably can't shoot that free throw you know they oh, probably yeah, need to yeah. go to the bench yeah. and bring <laughs> bring someone that can shoot those free throws for him right now he hasn't made a free throw since the 13th of november against middle tennessee he's been all of five since 25 percent on the season and he missed that one eiu gets the rebound out top right side jackson finds goodwin on the wing covered up quickly by morant Stark out of the game with those two fouls. They'll go left side to Stark. That Starks, I should say. He has the S on his name. Good one on the right side. Curls to the left. That's Jackson thinking of a three, shooting the three, missing it. And high to get the rebound. Miller, and on his back will be Diallo. Good box out by Miller there. And smart play. Now the racers change ends, go to the free throw line with Terrell Miller getting the bonus. Miller has slipped a bit lately at the stripe as well. He's down to 80%. That's still good for 10th, however, in the OVC. Had a game where he was two for five against Auburn. This one is in the air, and it's no good. So the race for free throw woes continue. Sanchez has missed one. Hawkins, two. Miller, the front end of a one and one. Starks, three makes are all they had. That opens the door for EIU to get closer than their eight-point deficit. 113 remaining in the half. Smith has it left side. He finds Starks to the right side. Goodwin fakes the pass to Diallo. Good hedge there by Sanchez. Forces Goodwin to give it up. They'll work the left wing over to Smith. He's deep on the wing. He finds it to start for a deep three out front. High kick, rebound, no good. Hawkins couldn't get it, but Buchanan does. He'll go in, swim move, banked it. It kicked out, but he drew the foul. He'll go to the line for two. Shaq Buchanan came up with that loose ball, and he had, it, had his eye on the bucket the whole time. Took two hard dribbles in two long steps, Neil, and almost got the three-point play opportunity. Shaq Buchanan has improved his free throw shooting, struggled to start the season. He's up to 72%. That went front of the rim, and he got the shooter's roll that rolls on in. Five points for Shaq Buchanan. He could push it back to a 10-point lead with 52 seconds remaining in the half, and he does. Both makes by Shaq Buchanan. 50 seconds to go. Eastern Illinois has it. Final minute of play here in the opening half. Opening night of play in the OVC. Pass left side. Buchanan went for the steal and tipped it away into the hands of Matt McMahon, but he was standing out of bounds. He goes back to the Panthers. Pretty good hands by the old point guard over there, Matt McMahon. Rigger man will be Jackson. He finds Goodwin. 16 on the shot clock. Goodwin right side near the elbow. Fakes the pass left. Throws it right. That's Smith driving in through a tough double team and banked it in. Max Smith with a sweet move to the basket makes it 39 to 31. You see the toughness that this Eastern Illinois team plays with even on the offensive end as they drive that ball hard to the basket. Racer is trying to hold for the final shot. Shot clock is off. We're down to 14 seconds. Moran has it. 
about five feet inside the midcourt stripe. We're down to nine seconds. There's eight. Miller sets the screen. Morant thought of shooting a three. No look pass. Goes into Sanctions. Let the man go by. Had it blocked from behind. But it'll be a foul called against Jawan Starks. That's a good foul, though. You got a 25% free throw shooter going to the stripe for two. Sure is. Shaq Buchanan going to Sanctions and saying, all right, big fella, knock these down. Sometimes I think the ball gets in the palm of his hands when he's shooting the basketball, which is not where you want it. Sanctious shoots, hits it. First make for him since the 13th of November against Middle Tennessee. And who knows, maybe that'll start a good streak for him. 40 to 31. Off the schneid, second one in the air. Got them both. How about that? 25% coming in, and he sinks both. 2.4 seconds remaining. There's the lob pass. It's a catch and thrown in the air. I'm not sure if they'll even judge that as a shot by Starks. The Racers will head to the dressing room. Leading at halftime, it's Murray State 41 and Eastern Illinois 31. We'll have more coverage on our halftime show. Sports powered by CFSB. This is the Racer Sports Network. We hope that you're enjoying John Moran's first triple-double at Murray State, December 28, 2017. We made it to the half here, and uh, Kenny and Neil are back with us here. Guys, uh, isn't it amazing that John Morant was only one out of four in that first half and that one bucket was a three? Uh, but here we are at the half. He's got six rebounds and eight assists. Uh, eight assists. That, that is so much like John Morant, isn't it? That, yeah, it was, but really that particular season, that was the hardest part of probably getting the triple-double for him because he wasn't being relied on to get right. the points. I mean, if he got the points, great, but uh, he, he needed to get the assists, and we were just starting to see this point guard can really rebound. I, I, I'm sure this won't continue as the season goes on, but he looks pretty good early on. Well, as it turned out, it did continue as the season went on. But uh, the second half, he just needed a few more points, and uh, we were able to see him get those. Uh, but uh, to me, he had the hard part already done, getting it in the second half. I, I'm not going to say it was going to be easy, but I think that was the easiest of the three things to get for him, considering his position. Uh, Kenny, in this game, uh, we're going to see Morant ends up with 14 assists uh, with the way uh, Jonathan Stark was making shots and Terrell Miller – um, that they were shooting very well, so Ja was piling up the assists. But a lot of folks don't remember that this was the 20th season of the CFSB Center, and this was the arena record of 14 assists. And it was Aubrey Reese who had the uh, former uh, record of 12 from 1999. So that, that assist record in the arena had stood for a long time. Well, and you, you saw how John Grant loved – to distribute the basketball in this game is he he got more excitement and more fanfare out of making the great pass uh, than he did scoring the basketball and I remember Neil and I talking about his rebounding and and from a point guard it was just something that we hadn't seen but what Ja knew is that if he went and got the defensive rebound the fast break turned into instant offense immediately when he got the rebound so he he wasn't scared to go in and rebound against the big guys. And so he ended up with 14 assists on only 27 made field goals. So over half of the baskets made, John Morant had assisted on in this game. Well, and the other thing, too, I remember it was about two weeks before this, and I'm just pulling it up here very quickly. It was the Murray State game at St. Louis. And that was the night, I guess, I remembered – or I realized what kind of rebounder this kid was. He had 12 rebounds against St. Louis from the point guard spot. Just, just incredible stuff. Uh, and, and isn't this neat to look back on this kind of stuff with John Morant? It was. Th this was also a game where uh, the leading scorer in the second half of this game we're about to see, Shaq Buchanan, who had nine points, a uh, little hint of what we were going to see from Shaq as well, and the great chemistry that they had together. He had super chemistry with Jonathan Stark and Terrell Miller, but this was starting to develop with Shaq Buchanan as well, and it's part of what made John Morant what he was, and that's he made all the players around him better and they knew if I work hard and he gets the rebound and I hustle down the floor I might get an alley-oop and I think Shaq had at least one in this game and Kenny uh, Jonathan Stark was well on his way here 
to being the OVC MVP and the OVC Athlete of the Year. Um, just a tremendous uh, season that he put in. Well, it does see, you know, that he agreed to move off the basketball is he's a returning point guard to make room for this young freshman. But, but Jonathan Stark quickly understood that when he moved without the ball in his hands, that this freshman point guard was unselfish enough that he was going to find him. And what a great backcourt they were that entire season together. And, and then you throw in Shaq Buchanan and, and Terrell Miller and, and, you know, what a team. Well, guys, I sure appreciate you joining us here. Uh, we'll enjoy the, the second half here from John Morant's first triple-double at Murray State, the Racers uh, beating Eastern Illinois of uh, December 28, 2017. So enjoy the second half. Points. We are set for second half action. Racers begin the second half. They have Jonathan Stark and Jalen Dupree with two fouls each. Musa Dam and Ray Crossman with two each for Eastern Illinois, but no one else is in any foul trouble. Out from the three-point line, the Racers one for eight. If everyone but Jonathan Stark. So the Racers have got to be able to play inside out, try to get some offensive paint touches and and not settle for that three-pointer. Terrell Miller especially looked like he rushed two or three of those from the three-point line. John Moran top of the key, and we are underway for the second half. Finds Dupree out top. He looks left side, dribbles once, comes away to Stark. Gives a little pump fake. He'll drive right side, mid-block, throws a wide pass to Buchanan, who has to chase it down. He'll give it away to Stark on the sideline. Good defense by EIU. Stark gets a screen, whips it into the left corner for a three, and Morant missed it too hard. Tipped in the air, and the rebound pulled down by EIU. Allen goes on the far side up to Jackson in some heavy traffic. Dive on the floor, poked away by Morant, but picked up by Goodwin on the sideline. Goodwin will now dribble it out high. Opening possession of the half for EIU. Gives it away to Jackson in front of his own bench. He dribbles between the legs once, lifts that, finds Crossland, squares up for the three. Left side of the rim won't go. On the rebound, it's saved out to Goodwin for another three, and that one rattles off no good, and Dupree grabs the rebound for the Racers. Off to Morant, no look pass to Stark. He'll drive in for the alley-oop lob. It was stuffed on the glass there with a great play by Dama to upset a potential dunk by Buchanan. Dribble back behind the back, left for Crossland. Now to Goodwin, he'll... Throw it to the baseline to Jackson inside. Starks had his shot blocked by Dupree, but got it back. Kicked it back out to Crossland. They'll work the left side now through Goodwin off to Jackson. He gets a screen at the elbow, lost the ball. He's able to tip it to Crossland, who missed the shot. He was so open, he couldn't believe it. And Miller with the rebound. He finds Stark. Contact, no whistle. Contact again. That'll be a whistle, and that's Crossland's third foul on the reach in. Boy, Neil, the first minute and 30 seconds, is that going to be the OVC Follies? I mean, just, just plays on both ends of the floor. No one being able to come up with loose balls. And shots not falling. Just uh, both teams off to a little rough start here in the second half. Well, it happens. It comes out to John Morant. He's at the top of the key. Neither team able to break the ice so far. We played nearly two minutes of the half. Morant dribbles, gets a screen from Dupree, floods down right side of the lane, kicks it to Buchanan for the corner three. That's his spot and he drained it. That's the little spot. He's got a he's got a, a selfie mark over there on that right hand corner and John Morant knew it and got it to him. 44-31 is the score. Racers equal their biggest lead at 13. Goodwin mid-block stops, ditches it out. Top of the key, three by Starks, missed badly. Left side of the rim, Buchanan with the rebound. Off to John Morant, he finds Buchanan. Inside the left elbow, puts the floater up, and he banked it in. Well, Jack Buchanan puts his head down, drives hard, physical to the basket, got it up off the glass. Five and a half for Buchanan, had six at halftime, 46-31. Racers, their biggest lead of the game. Nice spin move in by Starks. Put it up. Dupree went up and fouled him. He knew it. You could see the grimace on the face like, ah, darn. That's going to be three fouls on Dupree. Well, Jalen Dupree came over to help and immediately gets that foul. And you hate to see him get off to a start like that here in the second half. And Matt McMahon's going to the bench to bring Breon Sanctus in. But Jalen Dupree coming over to help. And that's, that's what happens when guards don't keep the ball in front of them 
then it puts pressure on the post players to come over and help and get in foul trouble. Jawan Starks, a 63% free throw shooter, missed the first of two. He has another one coming. So Dupree out. Sanchez, who had a good half, is back into the game. Second free throw is good by Jawan Starks. First point of the half for Eastern Illinois after the Racers had put the first five on the board. Sanchez gets it in to Ja Morant. Across the center stripe. Guarded by Jackson. Man-to-man -man pressure. Sanchez comes up, sets a high screen. Backdoor bounce. It was kicked. It was intended for Stark, but a good kick to defend that by Jackson. Well, that's a special call play from the bench there that Matt McMahon thought they might catch Eastern Illinois sleeping here, trying to get Jonathan Stark to go backdoor. Morant will be the trigger. Underneath out of bounds, right side. He finds Stark in the near corner. Stark will dribble up the near sideline. Gets a screen from Sanchez. Doesn't shoot. Throws left side to Morant. He's between the circles. Under 10 on the shot clock now. He finds Buchanan left side. Buchanan dribbles. Down low to Miller. Four on the shot clock. Down to three. And had it poked away and stolen from behind by Goodwin. Goodwin speeds it up the floor. He attacks. Bounces back door. Inside. Up and in by Musa Dama for his first point to the game. Eastern Illinois coming out with with Ray Crossland on Stark, 6'6", six, six in length, trying to be able to cause some problems. Morant finds Miller trying to get off the three. Schneid halfway down, kicked out. Buchanan went for the rebound, missed it. But it is Sha or, uh, Sanchez who went in, goes with the left-hand layup. He missed and came down with a little bit of a turned ankle. But a lead pass for EIU is too far out in front of Dama. He tipped it off the glass, and the racers get it. So no harm, no foul off the miss. Stark loses his man. Step back three doesn't go, but a stuff on the rebound by Buchanan. Shag Buchanan, when he goes to the offensive glass, Neil, he is a lethal weapon for the racers. Seven for Buchanan. It's 48-34. Eastern Illinois will take their third timeout with the racers up 14. That will get us to a full timeout here with 16.06 remaining. Force powered by CFSB. This is the Racer Sports Network. The racers have been able to push this lead out is is making sure that the team defense that they're keep closing those gaps and keeping Eastern Illinois from driving the basketball. Terrell Miller having a difficult time shooting the ball as he came into the game the last two games 13 for 36 from the field tonight three for nine and 0 for six behind the line. Racers have got to be able to get him the basketball in some easier scoring positions so he can try to get his confidence built up. Out top, Cook, left-hand dribble. Gets it away to Smith on the near sideline. One bounces it to Goodwin. He'll come out top, fakes the pass right, looks left, then throws right. That is Smith. He dribbles, looks for the step back shot. He's down to four on the shot clock, loses it on the floor. Cook throws up a prayer of a shot. That's going to be a shot clock violation as it hit the side of the backboard. Yeah, there's Matt McMahon giving his defense a hand, and the bench is up as, as the defense did a nice job throughout that whole possession. 48-34 the score. That'll get us to the official media timeout. However, this time we are going to keep it right here. As we tell you about Sirloin Stockade, a pregame favorite for all your racer teams, offering an all-you-can-eat hot and cold buffet, including hot entrees, vegetables, and salads. The full-service bakery offers fresh rolls, spice cakes, and soft-serve ice cream with a variety of toppings. Sirloin Stockade providing great food at a great value. Stop by before or after the game at Sirloin Stockade on South 12th Street in Murray. Just look for the big cow. Well, we gave you the final Tennessee State and UT Martin, the first one in the books, and Martin officially in first place in the OVC thanks to their 63-60 overtime win. Austin P at home against Edwardsville. That's Murray's opponent Saturday night, and they're blowing them out 62 to 40. Uh, Austin P really playing well lately after a tough start. Jacksonville State blasting out of the gate. They're crushing Eastern Kentucky 29 to 11, 244 left in the first half. Belmont leading at SEMO 47 to 36. That one is gone to halftime. And Tennessee Tech, after a slow start, they have rebounded to take the lead against Morehead State 26-23 with 5.15 to go. A lot of tough teams this year. 18-game schedule. It'll really test teams' depth as we go out throughout the year. Yeah, it will. And this is, uh, this is a wide-open league race, you know, so far coming in. Belmont, Jacksonville State, and the Racers have looked like they might have separated themselves. 
But I'm telling you, you go on the road in this league, and uh, it's going to take a heroic efforts to be able to win on the road. And, and you can see how the home teams are defending turf tonight. Racers face full court pressure. Stark able to get it up against Miller to Buchanan. He turns around, finds Morant, but he ran over the defender and picked up the charge. He jumped in the air and hit Cook as he turned around to find Moran, and I don't think he knew that Cook was in front of him. Yeah, actually. that was quite a collision there as, as Shaq Buchanan going to the basket. The Racers had broken the press easily, and uh, Buchanan was trying to get the ball to Morant wide open on the three-point line, but uh, quite a collision there, and, and uh, I think, yeah, I think Cook's going to have to come out of the game as, as uh, he's, he got hit in the face there, and, so he's overseeing his trainer, Eastern Illinois basketball. A little, little blood from the nose, I think, is what I'm seeing. So right back in the game is Goodwin. Racers are up by 14, 48, 34, 7, 3 start to start the half. Left side drive. Goodwin dishes it down low to Dama. He kicks it back out top to Crossland to Smith in the near corner. He'll dribble it out high with a right hand. Comes back to the left. Now to Jackson. Down on the baseline. Crossland, what a matchup nightmare against Stark, but he doesn't utilize it. Kicks it into the corner with a skip pass. This is Goodwin with the missed shot. And the rebound pulled down by Jonathan Stark. Wants to push it in heavy traffic. No look pass. Finds Smith. Pumps. Shoots. Misses. But drew the foul. Wow. How did he get that basketball through their defense? Jonathan Stark, he had the, he had the ball on a yo-yo, Neil. And he was just playing with them all the way down. And found Smith running the floor. Smith's going to go and get two free throws. That is Dama's third personal foul. Smith has been hot of late, six of his last six at the charity stripe over his last three games, and as I say that, it kicks out. Racers have not been very good at the charity stripe this evening. 58% hitting just 7 of 12. Anthony Smith with another coming. 76% on the season. He's been quite good. That one is good. 49 to 34. Racers Back up by 15. That equals their biggest lead. Goodwin to the right side finds Starks. He'll dribble out high. Finds Crossland at the top of the key. Works it to the left side now to Goodwin. He pump fakes the pass right. Gives it left side now to Jackson. Cut off nicely by Buchanan as he trying to go left side of the lane. He'll get in there anyway. Put it off the glass. Rolled off the front of the rim and Miller able to get a rebound. Tough miss there by Jackson. Pass well defended. Miller trying to throw to Anthony Smith, who looked up and saw it floating over his head, a bad pass out of bounds. Matt McMahon's telling John Moran, go get the basketball from the big fella. We, we, we got a guy that can bring it. Terrell Miller thought he had a play there, and he just sailed the ball over Smith's head. Now he doesn't really like it when uh, Terrell tries to be the point guard, just to be honest about it. A little eight-foot runner mid-block, no good, but Miller getting it done on the boards. Grabs another rebound. That's seven for him. Morant speeds it the other way. Goes up for the shot. Missed it, but drew contact. That'll send John Morant to the line for a pair of free throws. He has clinched his double on the assist with 10. He has three points and six rebounds. So I think it's a night where he could certainly do it, Kenny. Yeah, he can. As he's going to continue to to be so unselfish, though, Neil, that the points is probably the toughest piece. Uh, because he's, he's always looking for the teammates. And, and how that elevates this team so much when he is, has the basketball in his hands. They understand how to play without the ball in their hands. He'll find them when they get themselves open. Morant makes both free throws. The first one, a lot of metal, but dropped through. The second one, nothing but net. 51-34. That is the biggest lead of the game for the Racers. As Goodwin hands it into front court, he'll work right side. Gets it to Jackson. Little shovel goes inside. Got away with a walk. Everybody saw it, but the officials. Rebound by Morant. He brings it across. Right side, Buchanan wide open. Three, bad miss. Smith got away with a push and is able to get the rebound. He just kind of gave a little elbow to get Dama out of the way. And the official missed that too, but they didn't get a miss on the foul. It'll send Smith to the line for two. And this racer crowd, Neil, there's a, there's a high basketball IQ fan in the house tonight, and they recognize the hard work by Anthony Smith there as he went to that offensive glass. As you said, he got a little shove, got a, 
Got away with a little bit of push, but then he went and snatched that offensive rebound. Free now throw. he gets two free throws. Hits first, has another one coming. 52 to 34, 13, 33 remaining in the game. Next one by Smith, also good. So he's made three of four. That's right on the money of his 76% average. 53-34, EIU with it as Goodwin brings it across the far sideline. Guarded by John Morant. Gets a screen from Starks, curls to the left elbow, puts up the floater, bank, no good. Got his own rebound and put it up and rattled it in. It just bounced over the racers. They had position, just an unfortunate bounce. That happens sometimes. Goodwin has 10, and then the racers turn it over down low. It's picked out of there by Smith. Back to the left side, it comes to Jackson. He looks left, deep three in the air, front of the rim, one go. This time it's Dama called for the push off at the 13-01 mark, and that's deep foul trouble now for Musa Dama, it's his fourth. Anthony Smith in there on the box out as he got position inside Dama. Dama led the OVC in rebounding last year, Neil. This is a, he is a force on the backboard, and now he'll go to the bench for a while. 13-01. Left in the contest, racers up 53 to 36. EIU made a, a run in the first half after the racers pushed it to 13, cut it to three, but once the racers got it back to 10, they haven't been headed so far since. Stark has it right side on the wing. Jonathan Stark, crossover dribble, splits two defenders, kicks it to Morant. There's Miller for a three, and he finally hit one. Well, he got his feet set that time, Neil. Didn't rush it when he's in a hurry. He drops down to about a 25% shooter behind the line. When he gets his feet set, he's 55 or 60. Miller had hit his first, or missed his first six, finally hits that one to push the lead to 20, biggest of the night. Left corner three for the answer in the air, and it's good by D'Angelo Jackson. Jackson doesn't shoot many threes, just four of six coming in on the season, but he hits his first of the game. Racers by 17, Morant left side, goes baseline, goes underneath with the reverse, put it up and in, and drew the foul. The highlight there is John Morant yo-yoed the defender, went by him in and under for the and one. Seven for Morant at the 12.07 mark. We're going to see Musa Dama check back in along with Crossland, and I think Jay Spoonauer just got to roll the dice. Yeah, they're in foul trouble, but we got to make a run here to get back in the game. We're going to see Cook also come back in. Now we'll get D'Angelo Jackson out. This is also right before a media timeout, so that'll get some rest. May get some of these guys out as well. Moran to the line where he's made both of his free throws. He has seven points, seven rebounds, and 11 assists. The free throw this time is a miss. And EIU has it trailing by 19 as we go under the 12-minute mark. Up against that media timeout. Goodwin with the left-hand dribble, works it on the side, lifts it, throws it right side to Cook. They'll work the right now to Crossland. He dribbles out high, finds Cook, squares up for the three, front of the rim won't go. Rebound into the hands of Morant. Gets a little closer to the triple-double. One hands it, left corner three. It is no good out of the hands of Hawkins. Chased down by Miller. Hawkins in heavy traffic is able to dig it out, and he'll take a couple of dribbles on the far sideline. Continue dribbling now with 25 on the shot clock. Racer lead 19. Morant has it on the near sideline. Three points and two rebounds away from a triple-double for Morant. Racers have spread the floor here. Miller comes up, acts like he's going to set a pick. It clears it out for Morant. He dishes to Smith, who went up for the shot. He missed it, and that'll get us to our media timeout as Smith will head to the line for a pair of free throws when we come back out of the media timeout with the Racers up 58-39. 11-11 to go. Horse powered by CFSB. This is the Racer Sports Network. Ja Morant with seven points, eight rebounds, and 11 assists, Neil. And he just makes so many things happen. That, that particular instance, Matt McMahon calls a special call from the bench. And he's able to, Morant's able to break down the defender, get into the paint, force the help to come over. And so now Anthony Smith goes to the free throw line with two free throw lines and another foul on Eastern Illinois. Free throw no good by Smith. I said Crossland had fouled out with his fifth. They had him listed with five fouls. He's still listed with five. Our sheet says five, and he's still in the game. So obviously that's an error. <laughs> it's the book across the way that matters, not the statistics we have. 
That free throw is good, so one of two by Smith makes it 59-39. Coughlin's still in. I only had him with four fouls, but I've been known to miss one here or there. I just assumed they were right on the stat sheet, but that's not the case. Goodwin with a handoff to Cook. Fakes the pass left. He nearly traveled. I thought he held his pivot foot. The fan squalled a bit, but looked like a good non-call. To the left side, Goodwin steps back for the three and hit it. Just shot it out of nowhere. Five and a half, 13 in the game for Montel Goodwin. 59-42. Morant on the far side gets a screen from Smith. Jump pass, dangerous in there. Finds Miller Bank, missed it. Got his own rebound, had it knocked out of his hands by Crossland. It goes to the race. John Morant smiling, looking at Miller, saying, Ah, Lee, you blew my assist. Yeah. Great pass from the top of the key there from Morant to Miller. Lobs it out to Smith. Across the lane, it goes to Miller. To the sideline now, Morant to Hawkins between the circles. He works right side. It's Miller for a three. That one's no good. So Miller did hit one three, but his tough night shooting continues as he has hit four for 12 overall, one of eight from three range. 59 to 42, Goodwin just made the three. Across the lane, finds Diallo. He puts it up, rattles off, no good. Shaq Buchanan high to get that rebound for the Racers. He passes left side to Morant. In the far corner it goes to Hawkins. He fills up high, lifts the rebound, or lifts the dribble rather. Comes away to Morant, gets instructions from Matt McMahon as we hit 15 on the shot clock. Pass to the left, it's Hawkins. Bounces to Buchanan, to Morant. Cross inside, it's Miller off the glass and in. There it is there as Morant was able to thread the needle there with the special call there. Good seal on the low block by Miller to get his man on his back. 12 assists, three in the air. That's another good one by Goodwin, who's hit back-to-back -back threes for EIU to make it 61-45. 9.20 remaining. Morant gets by his man, goes up, dishes across into the corner, chased down by Hawkins. That wasn't what it was intended to do. He dumps it inside for Smith, and it's tipped out of bounds by Diallo to go back to the racers. Subs in. It'll be Stark and Dupree in. Morant and Miller out. Neil, we talked about the importance of the toughness points in this game tonight as Jay Spoonhour's teams will, will force you to be tough in one of those Stats is rebounding. The Racers out rebounding them 42 to 25 now over Eastern Illinois. Out front, Hawkins runs the show with Moran on the bench. Now Jonathan Stark comes out and gets the ball. Seven on the shot clock. Stark has no point in the half. 16 at halftime. Crossover dribble for the step back. Front of the rim won't go. And we get a foul called against the Racers on the rebound. I believe it's Anthony Smith. It's his second. Anthony Smith working in there. Is, he's going to get his money's worth. Is he's going to go to that offensive glass, and if you don't block him out, he'll go get it. And that time he, he got a little too physical. Goodwin brings it into front court. 8.47 and ticking inside the free throw line. Knocked out of his hands, but Stark able to recover and get the ball down low. Looked like a little pinball action, and he puts it off the glass and in. Stark has eight, 61-47. Stark inside. Jump pass goes to Buchanan. Off the glass and in on the baseline. Buchanan has nine all in this half, or a nine in this half. Six in the first half, 15 in the game. Good one on the sideline. Finds Starks out high. He throws on the right sideline to Jackson. Down on the mid block. Fade away from 15. Is no good by Dama. Racers Anthony Smith gets the rebound off to Jonathan Stark into front court. He's on the far sideline as we go under the eight-minute mark up against another media timeout. Racers in a 1-4 set at the moment. His Stark dribbles out high. He's done a really good job with Crossland on him. Again, it still shows him with five fouls, but that certainly isn't correct. Screen set by Dupree. Stark looks for his first points, goes in, and had it blocked. Rebound by Dupree who put it up and in. Jonathan Stark hit that the, the barrier hard behind the basket, and he's coming out a little bit of limp, but looks like he's okay. Racers back by 18, 65-47 in the lane. Right hand hook left short by Dama. Got his own rebound, goes inside to Crossland, and we'll get a charging foul. Good job by Smith to sell it as the contact was initiated, and Crossland certainly has fouled out now. That'll be his fifth as we get to the media timeout. 65-47 your score with 
7.23 remaining in the game. The racers on top. Horse powered by CFSB. This is the Racer Sports Network. 7.23 remaining in the game. They've been in control the entire second half. Yeah, yeah, they have, Neil. And that's been done on the defensive end as they are holding Eastern Illinois to 29% from the field the second half and 33 for the game. Matt McMahon's got to be very pleased with the defensive effort. John Moran back in out of that media timeout. He's at the top of the key, whips it to Smith across the lane left side, finds Hawkins under 10 on the shot clock, stop and pop three is in and out by Hawkins and the rebound pulled down by Smith of EIU. On the far side, Goodwin. Dribbles on the sideline, guarded by Jonathan Stark. Throws to the left to Jackson. He gets a screen, good switch off there by Dupree, driving inside, getting away with a push. It is Goodwin, Dupree went to the floor to get it. An EIU's player, Goodwin, or rather Jackson, was on the floor when he reached for the ball, and that gives it to Murray State. Jalen Dupree reaching down there and trying to get it. He looked like me, Neil, trying to get down there and get it, and finally Stark came over and bailed him out, and the racers come away with the basketball. Yeah, he's he having trouble bending over there for whatever yeah, reason. I don't know if it's his back or just in a bad spot. I don't know what, but yeah, it did sort of look like me whenever I dropped something. And that's not usually the way Dupree looks. Pass left side to start. Shut out in the second half, yet the Racers have outscored EIU 24-16. Moran inside, got bumped, no whistle, and he banked it in anyway. Boy, he drew the contact and still made it, made it fall. He thought he was going to get the and one. He's one point away from getting a double at points. He has nine points, eight rebounds, 12 assists. Down low. It goes to Dama. Dama looks to go across the lane. Now he's going to try to muscle up against Dupree. Puts the shot up. No good on the rebound. It's Dupree. He'll dish it off to John Moran. Racers up 20 with 5.50 to go. Moran has it on the near sideline. 5.46 and ticking. Comes to the top of the key. Looks right. Finds Hawkins. Now to Morant. Brings it out near the midcourt strike. 13 on the shot clock. Gets a screen. Doesn't want the three. Gives it up to Stark on the far sideline. Stark will drive inside. He put it up. Banked it in and drew the foul. Well, I love seeing Jonathan Stark drive the basketball. Such a good free throw shooter. And we saw him last year, Neil, as he would drive into the lane. And at times, he would be able to to, he's such an athlete, he, he contorted his body to be able to, to get away from the defense instead of taking that blow, getting the foul, and then going and making the free throw line. And you see much more this year being able to attack the basket and get fouled. Well, the foul went against Dama, his fifth, and I don't know if the technical foul went against Dama or Jay Spoonauer, but nevertheless, it is a technical against Eastern Illinois. Wait and see what they list here. I didn't. I didn't hear they just called that on the bench, but that was called by one of the officials. It'll send Stark to the line to hit the free throw. These are the technical shots, I would assume here, because he had one shot coming. He hits both of these, so now he has his free throw coming here to try to complete a three-point play. Jay Spoon already didn't act too upset about it. I, so I don't know if he said the magic word or what, or if it was on one of his players. Dama was was mumbling at the official as he went off, and it looked like it had might have ended up being on him, but we'll know that we ever got that a final. Yeah, it looks. Well, it says on Hawkins, yeah, but that they put the that, wrong 25 right, up there. Right. It was on Dama who the technical was on. So Stark gets the free throw. He's 6 of 6 tonight. He's made 17 in a row at the line. 72-47 as we approach the five-minute mark of the game. Pass left side. Goodwin attacks to the left elbow. Gives it up out top to Smith. Now to the right side. Jackson inside the elbow. Put up a tough shot. Missed it, but drew contact. That will get him to the line with five minutes to go. Boy, I watched Anthony Smith that possession defensively, and he did such a good job of helping Help and recover. You help on your man on the ball, and then you recover to your man. He did it twice very effectively. Then the, the last time he reached in just at the last minute, and, and the official caught him with the foul. But Anthony Smith early on, Neil, 
we remember Matt McMahon talking about he was having a little difficult time understanding and learning the defensive rotations, and he certainly got them under control now. He's doing a fine job. D'Angelo Jackson sinks both free throws to make it 72-49. EIU with six field goals in the second half. Pass to the left, it's Jonathan Stark. He's between the circles. He looks for Hawkins. Hawkins drives inside the free throw line, bumped from behind as he went to shoot. He's going to get to the line for a pair of free throws, and he'll have a chance to correct his woes, where he's two for his last eight over five games. Hawkins with two points on the night. He's 0 for 2 at the line. It was a really good free throw shooter coming in, and it gets between the ears, Kenny. When you can't make him, you just can't make him. It does. And, and, uh, and he's shaking his head and looking at his guys like he said, I don't know, you know, what's going on. But he's uh, he's uh, he's probably an 80-plus free throw shooter, Nils. He can really shoot the basketball and just – as you said, sometimes it's just seeing it go through the basket and building that confidence. Second free throw, and it rattles. Front of the rim, kicked off. That'll be a foul on Smith. He's picked up his fourth. As Hawkins now 0 for 4 at the line, and as good as it's been in many areas for the Racers, it's been a night to forget at the charity stripe, 64%. 72-49, Racers with 4.37 to go. Out top, Goodwin finds Cook. He dribbles on the sideline. One bounces it to Jackson. Takes it to the baseline. Jump pass to Goodwin for a deep three. It's no good. Hard kick rebound. Chased down by Smith, who gets it to Buchanan. Off to Morant. 4-17 and ticket. 13 assists for John Morant. Pass to the right goes to Shaq Buchanan. To Dupree at the top. To the left side, Morant. Looks to shoot, doesn't, gives it out to Hawkins. Seven on the shot clock. Hawkins, 18-footer at the top. It won't go. Diallo there to grab the rebound as we're up against our final media timeout of the night when we get a dead ball. Jackson right side into a double team. Gets it away to Goodwin with the pass. He'll flip it to Cook, top of the key. Flips it to the right side to Jackson, brings it to the top of the key, spins into two defenders, puts the floater up, left side of the rim, no good. Smith grabs the rebound for the Racers with 3.30 to go. Gives it to Buchanan, now to Morant. will get it into the forecourt. 3.24 and ticking. Racers put four white shirts down low as Morant throws right side to Buchanan. He's had a terrific game. Out top, Dupree. Left side to Morant. Looks it down on the baseline to Smith. Has his back to his defender. Goes left, right, back to the right. Bank, no good. Morant gets another rebound. Looks to go back up. Kicks it out to Hawkins for the wide open three, and it's good. John Morant with a rebound and an assist on that possession, Neil. And he gets his teammates' confidence going with Hawkins hitting the big three. Nine points, nine rebounds, 14 assists, and EIU will take a timeout with 2.50 to go. That'll turn into our full media timeout. 75-49, Murray State, and that's the chicken shot, so freeze axes for everybody. We'll be back in a minute. Horse powered by CFSB. This is the Racer Sports Network. You know, you just look into the huddle of this team, Neil, and there's smiles all around. You can see the buy-in, and there's nothing more magical than chemistry on a basketball team, and you can see this team's chemistry really coming together. Cook. Throws to the left side to Lucas Jones, seeing his first action of the night. Comes back to Cook. It's Jones at the elbow extended. Looks to get it with a bounce pass to Justice Green. Step back 15-footer, rattles off. And there's Morant's 10th rebound. He's a triple-double if he can score. He goes inside. Put it up. No, but he'll go to the line with a chance to seal a triple-double if he can hit one free throw. Well, you see the teammates, the bench going crazy. The, his teammates on the floor, everyone's aware of it. And it's, it's nice to see that he just went and snatched that rebound, Neil. He said, give me that defensive rebound. And then he went end to end and attacked the basket to draw the foul. Moran at the line, it's in the air. There's your triple-double. The first player since Isaac Miles to do it. And it will not be his last, Kenny. No, it will not. And it's so easy for him, Neil, as he didn't force any play tonight. 
and Matt McMahon checks him out of the game. And look at this racer bench, the seniors over there, Stark Miller giving him high fives. Great effort by the freshman John Moran. Devin Gilmore checked in for him. He wouldn't be smiling more if he had the triple double. No, you're right. He's and that he, happy. He was the politician, I think, that convinced <laughs> Coach McMahon to put him back in the game. 77 to 49. Down low, Jones with a nice feed. Shot up no good by Justice Green, who was fouled from behind. I think, wasn't this Green kid on the racer's radar at some point? Yeah, Danny? I think so. That they, they looked at him. Boy, he's a he's an athletic wing player. Looks like he's uh Long arms, you know, probably 6'4". Good shooter from what I understand, 77-49. The foul against Taylor, free throw up and good. Justice Green, a 50% free throw shooter, but a small sample size with his limited time off the bench, 77-50. Next one is up and good. You don't think these racer seniors getting, remember last year, getting beat on senior night here yep. by 17 by Eastern Illinois. And this was a game that's been circled by the returners from last year. Yeah, the McReynolds kid hit him some of those shots from near Almo, I think. I mean, it was it, ridiculous. Just had a terrific game. Uh, Well-earned victory for EIU last year. Hawkins here on the right side, goes through two defenders, then trying to get it down low to Whitley. Shot put up no good, had his rebound knocked out of bounds. And who it's, it's going to be off Eastern Illinois. No, it's going to be off the Racers. It'll go to Eastern Illinois. That was Gilmore, not Whitley. Whitley, uh, with concussion symptoms, is unavailable tonight. Right. Breon Whitley had a little uh, collision in practice and and uh, has, had, was not practicing, and he's in the c concussion protocol. Uh, we talked about this Racer, you know, team defensively six minutes and 58 seconds Neil since Eastern Illinois has had a field goal Wilson into the game seeing his first action he throws it right side now out top to Michael Shavers at the left elbow throws it back out there's a deep three by Green no good on the rebound Diallo chased it down in the corner it's picked up by Shavers he'll get it out to Jones doesn't want the three throws across the lane Diallo shakes anxious missed the shot Ja'Kai Taylor upset that and picked up the first one. Still competing with the racers that are on the floor not giving up an easy one there to Diallo and you know you look at this Eastern Illinois team with with Dama and Bubakar Diallo two you know six nine post players this high flying jumpers and, and then you look at the perimeter that they have and there's just something missing I don't know if it's the lack of of, of the point guard Terrell Lewis that's out of the game but there's just a piece of the chemistry that's not all meshed together yet for Eastern Illinois, but boy, they are a talented bunch. Bubakar Diallo hasn't attempted a free throw until this evening. He misses the first of two. He'll get a chance to put this one in had it not gone in because he gave a little hesitation to put four racers in the lane, but he got it to go in. Yeah, I hadn't seen a head fake at the free throw <laughs> line like that in a while, but that That's, was a good shot fake. It was. And it, and it drew the guys in the lane, so he would have gotten the third try if he'd have missed it. Barry Henson would have loved that. That's as good a shot fake as you'll see. 77-52 <laughs> as we hit the minute mark. This is Zach Hopewell in the contest. Mid-block, puts the double pump off the glass and in. Hopewell, he's not messing around. Good, nice, hard drive to the basket. 79-52, to 52. EIU. Maybe their final possession. They'll go on the baseline, drive inside, shot put up, no good. And the rebound pulled down. Shot again by Green off the miss. And this will be the rebound pulled off by Devin Gilmore. Razors with it as Hawkins had six second differential in the clocks. As Hawkins looks left side. We get a foul away from the ball, and that foul is going to go against Sean Wilson. Sophomore out of Harvey, Illinois. What about this racer defense, Neil? Giving six field goals the second half. Six for 28, Eastern Illinois is. 18 for 62 from the field, holding them under 30%, 29% from the field. Hopewell at the line, a 67% free throw shooter, misses the first of two. He'll have another one coming here. Out of Owensboro, Apollo, Rex. Chapman High School put it up and in 80 to 52. Across the midcourt stripe, 
it's Wilson. He's between the circles, guarded by Hopewell. Goes through two defenders. He's covered up. Nowhere to go. Had it knocked away by Gilmore, but he picks it back up with seven on the clock. Shavers jacks up a three. It won't go. Rebound Gilmore tips it to Sanctious, and that'll do it. The Racers will put this one in the books in their OVC opener with a 80 to 52 victory over Eastern Illinois. Murray State Racer Radio Network broadcast are produced by Neil Bradley, the executive producer Steve Harold, the chief technical engineer Jeremy Wilkerson, the studio producer for this game and the women's game, Bill Harley. Any use of the descriptions or accounts of this game without permission from Murray State University is prohibited. The final score, Murray State 80, Eastern Illinois 52. Stay tuned for the Murray Bank Post Game Show coming up next on the Racer Sports Network.